Governor's General Session. Today is April 6, 2021, and we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance led by Commissioner O'Grady. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner O'Grady. Uh, as a reminder, this is a public meeting and is being recorded. We kindly ask that you maintain the same level of decorum as if we were meeting in person. <clears throat> Finally, for those of you who are calling in, please ensure that you've muted your phone by your phone line by pressing star six. We appreciate your cooperation. Uh, today, uh, it is my pleasure to talk about um, National Autism Awareness Month. April is National Autism Awareness Month. Uh, about 1% of the world population has autism. That's one in 54 births in the United States. In an effort to further promote an inclusive community, we're renewing our commitment and tradition of spreading awareness and igniting change to create a more accepting community for individuals with autism. My colleagues and I encourage you to educate yourselves about autism, the autism spectrum disorder, and be a positive part of our inclusive county. Uh, we're in for a treat this morning for sure. We have with us Zane Hershaw and his parents, Gene and Gwen. Diagnosed with autism at the age of four, did not stop Zane from flourishing and realizing his dreams. So at 17, he and other talented musicians with autism formed the band Blue Spectrum. Gwen is featured, Gwen is featured autism spectrum uh, advocate. And if you haven't seen it, I recommend watching her TED Talk. Um, uh, I haven't seen it, but I am sure it is good. I'm looking forward to it. Um, it will give you a new perspective on autism and the parents of autistic children. If you could please share with us ways that we can be more accepting of people with autism and share how you live your life, how you live a life of potential, promise, and purpose. In addition, it's my understanding that we get to hear from Zane play one of his latest songs, Living on a Prayer, via a recent recording he posted to YouTube uh, for us today. So it's my pleasure today to welcome the Hershaw family for being here and uh, being advocates for uh, our entire community. Welcome Thank to the uh, Franklin County Board of Commissioners. Thank you. Good morning. We are so honored to be here. Happy Autism Acceptance Month. And um, we just wanted to update you on what's been going on since we last visited with you several years ago. Um, it's been pretty amazing. What started out as a simple outlet for our son has grown into quite an opportunity for us to advance a philosophy of inclusion for individuals with developmental disabilities. As Zane's talent on the guitar has grown, so have the invitations for him to play and for us to speak. As a solo artist and with his band, Blue Spectrum, Zane has played a wide variety of venues, both locally and nationally. Just to name a few, we've been to San Antonio, Texas, where he played at the Marriott River Center. We've played at the Hot Times Festival here locally a couple of times. We've played at the Grandview Ox Roast several times here. Wright State University during the Disability Conference. We've played four times at the Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati for a fundraiser called Stadium Strides for the Ken Anderson Alliance. We've played four times for the PAR Conference. That's the Pennsylvania Autism Resource um, Conference in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. We've played twice for the Ark of Montgomery in Maryland. We've played at OcaliCon um, three different times, the conference in November here locally. We've played several times to earn money for Special Olympics with their Polar Plunge. We've played at the Washington Courthouse Special Olympics event. We've played for the, the Self Advocates of Erie County. We've played at Kalahari Resort for the Synergy Conference, which is for disability in Sandusky. Also ComFest several times. We're very proud to have played at the Gahanna Creekside Blues and Jazz Festival here in Gahanna, our hometown. We've played for the UpFab All Disabilities Conference several times. We've even played at the Ohio State House a number of times for different events, including the Bridges to Equality Rally twice. We played for Westerville Fourth Friday, the Grove City Wine and Arts Festival. We're particularly proud that we played um, in 2019 at the BB King's Blues Club in Orlando, Florida played at Miami University for a Best Buddies event, the Ark of Kentucky in Louisville. Um, in 2019, I was the keynote speaker for the Autism Society of America National Conference, and of course, Zane played. And we also played in 
He also played in El Paso, Texas. And Gene and I spoke at their All About Autism conference. And it's been a host of other events. We've spoken at churches and some nightclubs, weddings, festivals. And no matter the venue, we are able to talk about autism and supporting them and supporting inclusion. And um, in that light, I'd like Gene to come on and tell a little bit more about what we've been doing. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for uh, uh, the invitation. Um, the importance of, uh, as much as I uh, enjoy the, the travel and and uh, his just witnessing his abilities, uh, I'm more impressed of how uh, the arts in particular has changed his entire personhood. Um, the arts are very important uh, for our children in particular. Um, it's created a bridge for him to connect with the world around him, his community, his family. Um, just the fact that I can, I can give him a hug when that was out of the question before music came into his life. Uh, in fact, before the pandemic, uh, the Ohio Arts Council reached out to us to accompany them to Capitol Hill to speak to legislators about the importance of the arts uh, for our community. Um, with his playing, uh, as his playing increases and his uh, visibility increases, it allows misinterpretations to be addressed. Uh, Zane's band, Blue Spectrum, kind of serves as a microcosm um, as to what can be. Zane is fully integrated into Blue Spectrum, not just as its, as its uh, star performer, but in all aspects of the band's operations and promotions. And this allows the arts to kind of serve as a springboard into general society as uh, people and companies and venues are able to envision utilizing the gifts and talents that exist in our community, uh, where we won't look for eye contact and other social cues to be used as determinants for a person's employment. Uh, and that is, and so that's a big, that's a, a big part of our, our message. Uh, as, as he started playing, people start sticking microphones in our faces. So uh, this is the message that uh, we, we take uh, every, everywhere we go. Uh, so now I'll go ahead and I introduce, uh, this is uh, Zane uh, playing his rendition of Bon Jovi's Living on a Prayer. Thank you. 
I got to say, I, I've been um, I've been in elected office for about 20, I think, 25. I think I'm going on 25, 20 or 25 or somewhere in there. I, don't know. I have seen a lot of really cool things in uh, in my span. And I would have to say that was probably the coolest thing that I've ever seen. <laughs> um, he He's really good. I, I can't see him on the screen. He's only got halves. I don't tell him. I, I, I want to say to you what a talent you have. And I want to encourage you to just keep on doing what you're doing. Um, all the places that you've traveled and the people who've heard you, uh, you have an impact on life that you may not even think about, but you're making people's day. You're making their day brighter. And uh, you certainly have for me today. And uh, I got a lot going on today. And so I needed that. So thank you so much. Uh, and oh, anytime, anytime. Anytime. Now I'm gonna hold you to that. Now oh, you said yeah. oh, yeah. everybody on this call heard you say you heard him say anytime, anytime. So and, we, and I keep my word for it too. What you say? I keep. I, I'll always keep my word. Oh, I believe that, <laughs> yeah. sir. I believe that uh, you have an amazing talent, and so um, thank you for your advocacy. Thank you for uh, your work. And thank you for just making everyone's day a little bit brighter. We all needed that and we appreciate you. Let me ask my colleagues to make a few comments. I'm sure they, they are as touched as I am. Okay. Amazing talent. And you make me happy and you made me smile throughout your presentation. And I'm sure you make a lot of people smile and um, it, it makes me happy to hear you play and wow, what talent. And that's a big, a big thing. You know, art is so important in so many ways. And I appreciate you and the talent that you have. It's not, a, it's not easy to get up on stage and present the way you do. Thank you for doing Anytime. it. Anytime. So like, yeah, I, I used to have stage fright a long, a long time ago. But not now. Not now. I'm, I'm fearless. <laughs> well, Zach, Thank you. 
Well, Zane, I got a couple things to tell you, buddy. Um, first, okay. first of all, yesterday I got my second dose of the virus uh, or the vaccine, and so I was I woke up this morning feeling pretty low. And uh, you took care of that for me this morning, so thank you very much. Um, second of all, uh, as the resident rocker on the on the board of county. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to more than 250 uh, concerts in my life. In, 1987, in 1987, I saw Bon Jovi. <laughs> and you are better than the original, buddy. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. I, 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 I saw a Bon Jovi concert, too, back in 2017. There you go. But you also reminded me of a couple other guys that I've seen. Uh, and I got a little bit of uh, – I got a little bit of um, – uh, Lenny Kravitz out of you this morning. I also got a little bit of uh, of um, uh, um, uh, what's Carlos Santana out of you this morning. I saw mm-hmm. those guys. I can see it. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's amazing talent you got there, man. That's some amazing talent, and uh, you keep it up. Uh, you're going places, buddy. Um, that was uh, a fantastic performance, and and those are some of the greats. Those are absolutely some of the greats. I also dug the Gibson. The Gibson shirt you were wearing that was pretty cool stuff. So uh, you keep you keep uh, you keep performing. You keep uh, showing that talent. That was uh, that was something else. All right, we'll do. And let me just conclude by saying to the Hershaw family, thank you, thank you for being advocates and thank you for being champions. Um, yeah. We know Zane's your son, but we know that you're fighting for a greater cause and a greater message and. Uh, we support you here at Franklin County. We're with you, and uh, we can't wait to have you all back. And and we're going to think of something really unique to have him perform. I can't yeah, think man. of it, but at some point, I could see us doing something that would be appropriate. And yeah. so um, uh, all of Franklin County should hear you. And, um, and I, I agree with Commissioner O'Grady. Yeah, I agree with Commissioner O'Grady. You, you made my day. So thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. What you Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good job, Bravo. Zane. We all needed that. I don't know. I don't know who picked uh, uh, the Hershaws to come down for the agenda, but that person on our staff gets a raise. Yeah. Uh, so that's what I was saying. <laughs> Whoever did that, that was a good choice. That was a good, good choice. I that was your kid. D, I think Robert yeah, Deaver just put it for Kid said it was all me. <laughs> <laughs> it. You you get a raise, brother. That was good. That was that was uh that was quite uplifting. Yeah, I'm gonna get a text message from Robin Deaver here in a couple seconds. <laughs> well, we do have to we do have to keep our agenda going. Uh, again, thanks to the Hershaw family for joining us today, and thank you for your advocacy. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, April thank you. is also National County Government Month, and uh, this month we'll be highlighting some of the things that we do and what counties are responsible for across the country. One of America's oldest forms of government, counties date back to 1634, with every American living within a county jurisdiction today. Even some places call them, even though some places call them parishes or shires, there are three over 3,000 counties across the nation run by nearly 38,000 elected county officials. They're responsible for 66% of all road miles, 38% of all bridges, and 78% of public transportation systems. Particularly right now, counties run 1,943 local health departments and more than 900 hospitals across this nation. We've got some exciting things to tell you about this month, including our own annual State of the County Report due on April 20th. So stay tuned to learn more about how we in Franklin County serve every resident every day. Looking forward to um, April. All right, let's keep this agenda going. Um, is there a motion to approve the minutes of March 30th, 2021 general session, the April 1st, 2021 briefing session, and the March 29th and 31st, 2021 administrative briefings? Second, or first, I'm sorry, <laughs> <laughs> of those minutes. Second. Moved and seconded <laughs> voting, Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. I, was I gotta say, I was I gotta say when I got my first shot, John, I felt the same way. I was off for like two days, man. So I feel you. And I'm not am, looking forward to that second I am, shot. I am so tired today. I'm not, I don't feel terrible. I'm just dragging. Yeah. 
there, I, man. I feel for you. I don't. I don't feel. I don't have the, the fever and everything that everybody else talks about from the Moderna shot. But I am. I'm sleepy. <laughs> I'm yeah. definitely sleepy, and I slept a lot last night. Mm-hmm. So. Well, let's work through this agenda and get you to get some rest, brother. All right. Uh, first up, court of common, please. Resolution number 24921. Resolution authorizing a novation agreement with Avarist LLC doing business as Avarist Health. Good morning, commissioners. Kimberly Canada, Director of Finance for the Common Police Court General Division. This resolution approves the name change for the urinalysis testing company currently servicing the courts. The company was initially doing business as American Court Services and now is doing business as Everhurst. No other terms or conditions have changed. Pending any questions, I request your approval. Uh, if there's no comments or questions, I will move approval of resolution um, 24921. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Resolution number 24921 has been adopted. Thank you, Thank Board you. of Commissioners. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. Resolution number 25021. Resolution accepting a single ditch count, excuse me, a single county ditch petition and referring to the county engineer for recommendation and fixing an hour and date for the view and first hearing on the Golf View Ditch Watershed, Brown Township, Franklin County, Ohio. Good morning, commissioners. My name is Cornell Robertson, Franklin County engineer and Franklin County drainage engineer for everyone in Franklin County. It's my honor and privilege to be with you today, and I'd like to start out by giving accolades to Administrator Wilson for having Zane play today. I enjoyed that very much. So, commissioners, this first resolution uh, states that a petition has been filed for the Gulf View County Ditch Petition. This is in the west part of the county in Brown Township, southwest of Fetter Road, Cole Road intersection and very near the Thorn Apple Golf Course. Greg Richards filed the single county ditch petition on March 4th to improve drainage in the associated watershed. This resolution fixes the hour and date of the virtual viewing to be May 19th at 1 p.m. and the first hearing to be June 22nd at 9 a.m. Pending any questions, I respectfully request your approval of the resolution. If there's no questions, I'll move approval of resolution 25021. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes to the resolution and to the engineer's beard. <laughs> that, that bad boy is growing, man. Yeah. It, it ain't stopping. <laughs> um, uh, resolution 25021 has <laughs> been adopted. All right, I'm sorry, Dean. Uh, engineer, you may continue, please. Resolution number 25121 Resolution awarding contract and approving contract bond to Shelley and Sands Incorporated for the Olin Tangy River Road storm sewer improvement in the amount of $169,996.40. This drainage project is in the northwest part of the county in Sharon Township, along the west side of the Olentangy River Road, south of Pressway Drive and north of the existing culvert at Turkey Run. This resolution is for a construction contract award to Shelley and Sands. We held a competitive bid on March 9th and received four bids. Shelley and Sands had the lowest and best bid and plans to surpass our equitable business enterprise goal of 10% by utilizing MS Trucking Incorporated and John K. Loner Company. I respectfully request your approval. If there's no questions, I'll move approval of resolution 25120. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Resolution number 25121 has been adopted. Resolution number 25221. Petition filed for vacation of a portion of Codette Road, unimproved, Mifflin Township, Franklin County, Ohio. This right-of-way vacation is in the northeast part of the county in Mifflin Township for a portion of unimproved Codette Road, west of Penny Lane, east of I-270, and north of Agler Road. This resolution is the first in a series of three for the vacation process. 
Johnny Torres Guzman filed, filed the petition and we will determine if the vacation is warranted as we move forward with the process. This resolution also fixes April 27th at 11 a.m. for the viewing and May 11th at 9 a.m. as the final hearing. Happy to answer any questions you may have. There's no questions. I'll move approval of uh, resolution uh, 252-21. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Resolution number 252-21 has been adopted. The Jefferson Township Road System, Franklin County, Ohio. Commissioners, as stated, this subdivision is in the northeast part of the county in Jefferson Township and known as the Farms at Jefferson Phase 3, 4, and 5. With this resolution, we are stating that the roadway infrastructure has been constructed to the county's subdivision regulations. The streets are ready for public use and maintenance can be turned over to Jefferson Township. Pending any questions, I ask for your approval of this resolution. If there's no questions, I'll move approval of resolution 253-21. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner O'Grady? Uh, yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Resolution number 253-21 has been adopted. Thank you all very much. Have a great day. Thank you. you. Economic development and planning. Resolution number 254-21, review of a petition to annex 38.09 acres, more or less, from Plain Township to the City of New Albany, case number ANX-08-21. Good morning, Commissioners. Jenny Snap, Economic Development and Planning Assistant Director. This resolution is to consider an expedited Type 1 annexation petition of 38.09 acres from Plain Township to the City of New Albany. The area to be annexed includes property located at 7555 Bevelheimer Road, um, a parcel at Bevelheimer Road, and 7325 Walnut Street. Um, all of those parcels are north of New Albany Road East, west of Bevelheimer Road, south of Walnut Street, and east of New Albany Condit Road. Petition was filed by agent and attorney Matthew Call of Kephart Fisher, who is in attendance, should you have any questions, on behalf of the property owners, William Holcher and Carol Pemberton. 30.2% of the site's a perimeter is contiguous with the city of New Albany, and the applicant has provided a copy of the annexation agreement between Plain Township and the city of New Albany. Again, that's a requirement of an expedited type one annexation petition. Petition meets all statutory requirements outlined in section 709.022 of the Ohio Revised Code and pending any questions, we request your approval of this resolution. If there are no questions, I'll move approval of 254-21. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Resolution number 254-21 has been adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, uh, jobs and family services. Resolution number 255-21. Resolution approving three contracts for on-site case management services between the Franklin County Department of Job and Family Services and Mount Carmel East Hospital, Mount Carmel St. Anne's Hospital, and Mount Carmel Grove City Hospital in the amount of $271,267.50. Good morning, commissioners. Bart Logan from Job and Family Services. Um, per, per the terms of these contracts, one of our case managers will provide dedicated full-time assistance in determining patient eligibility. Um, this is primary, primarily for Medicaid, but also for other agency programs like SNAP. Uh, for each of Mount, the Mount Carmel hospitals, as Dean mentioned, East Grove City and St. Anne's. Mount Carmel will reimburse our agency the actual monthly cost for each case manager that includes salary and benefits, as well as a portion, a portion of the uh, salary for the case manager supervisor. That amount is not to exceed uh, $9,644 a month. Um, the total reimbursement amount for this 12 month term is not to exceed $90,577 uh, $90, uh, per hospital. Um, for a maximum reimbursement of two hundred and seventy-one thousand dollars, two hundred and sixty-seven and fifty. Excuse me. 
Um, this, uh, while we've had a long time contractual relationship with Mount Carmel, this is a new contract and it includes two options to extend this contract by an additional 12 month term. Um, the only term that would change with that would be uh, the uh, reimbursement amounts, but that must be uh, mutually agreed upon by both parties. Pending any other questions, I ask for your approval. If there are no questions, I'll move approval of resolution 255-21. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Grady? Uh, yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Resolution number 255-21 has been adopted. Thank you, commissioners. And I would just like to say, uh, first of all, shameless plug for National County uh, Government Month. Uh, Director or Deputy County Administrator Bivens will be doing a webinar on the child tax credit later this afternoon for NACO. Um, they're talking about that new program that's going to reduce poverty by as much as 50% this year. It is at 3 p.m. She's going to be joined by scholars from the Urban Institute as well as Prosperity Now. We have information on our website, jfs.franklincountyohio.gov. But more importantly, I want to congratulate you, county administrator and commissioners, on being recognized by Business First as outstanding diversity champions, doing this on behalf of your entire racial equity council. You've never shied away from the uncomfortable conversations, but more importantly, doing the work that needs to be done, the capital W work to create a more just and equitable county government and a more just and equitable county. I'm proud to be part of the team working to ingrain racial equity in our DNA here at Franklin County. And so proud to serve under all of you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Bart. Thank you. Thanks, Bart. Next, uh, Justice Policy and Programs. Resolution number 25621, resolution authorizing three subgrant awards and contracts for services to provide public safety and crime reduction initiatives under the fiscal year 2020 Justice Assistance Grant in the amount of $297,341. Good morning, Commissioners. Last week, the board authorized our office to enter into a memorandum of understanding with the cities of Columbus and Whitehall authorizing the proposed FY 2020 Justice Assistance Grant joint funding plan, and also authorizing our office to serve as the administrative head uh, for the JAG funding. Based on the approved funding plan before you today are three subgrant awards. The first is to the Franklin County Sheriff's Office in the amount of $143,000, which will be used to continue support of the HOPE Task Force, the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force, warrants enforcements, community uh, policing programs, including their street smarts and their Sheriff's Office Citizens Academy. The next award will be in the amount of $11,341 to be awarded to the city of Whitehall, who intends to continue their youth delinquency and crime prevention initiative. And finally, the city of Columbus will be awarded $143,000 to support updates to their crime lab. Pending any questions, we respectfully request your approval of these three subgrant awards. If there are <clears throat> no questions, then I will uh, move approval of uh, resolution 25621. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyd? Yes. Resolution number 25621 has been adopted. Thank you. Sanitary engineers? Resolution number 25721, resolution authorizing a contract agreement with Elite, Elite Excavating Company of Ohio Incorporated for the Young Estates Pump Station Replacement Project in the amount of $669,766. Good morning, commissioners. I'm Ryan Stowe with the Sanitary Engineer. The Sanitary Engineer is requesting the authorization of a contract agreement with Elite Excavating Company of Ohio for our Young Estates Pump Station Replacement Project. This project entails constructing a new pump station, installation of a new force main, and decommissioning and demolishing of the existing pump station. Work includes installation of a 295-foot, 4-inch force main, the installation of a new duplex pump, pump station, an on-site generator, decommissioning and demolition of the existing pump station, abandoning of the existing 5,150 foot force main and site restoration. Cost of this construction will be paid from the 5 million provided to the sanitary engineer by the board of commissioners. 
Bids were received and reviewed by the sanitary engineer and our consultant, MS Consultants, an elite excavating company of Ohio was determined to be the lowest and best bidder for a total contract sum of $669,766. The sanitary engineer has successfully worked with elite in the past on numerous uh, water and sewer projects and look forward to working with them again. Pending any questions or comments, I request passage of this resolution. Well, if there are no comments or questions, I'll move approval of resolution 256.21. Commissioner, I'm sorry, we're at 257. Sorry, 257. I apologize, 257.21. Second. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Resolution number 257.21 has been adopted. Thank you. Next, uh, purchasing. Resolution number 258.21. Resolution authorizing an interlocal agreement with Region 8 Education Service Center to establish Franklin County's membership in the interlocal purchasing system, Purchasing Cooperative. Good morning, Commissioners. Megan Perry Balanier, Director of Purchasing. Commissioners, as you know, Franklin County agencies prioritize engagement, contracting, and partnership with local vendors and small and emerging businesses whenever possible. In certain circumstances, however, it becomes necessary to source goods and services from vendors through other means, including cooperative programs. The county is authorized under section 9.48 of the Ohio Revised Code to participate in a joint purchasing program operated by or through a national or state association of political subdivisions in which the purchasing political subdivision is eligible for membership. This resolution before you would authorize an interlocal agreement with Region 8 Education Service Center to establish Franklin County's membership in the interlocal purchasing system or TIPS purchasing cooperative. This is a no cost membership that will provide the county access to a number of competitively bid contracts and will serve as an enhancement to our sourcing toolkit. Pending any questions, I respectfully request your approval of this resolution. Uh, if there are no further questions, I'll move approval of the resolution 258-21. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Resolution number 258-21 has been adopted. Resolution number 259-21, resolution approving purchases for various Franklin County agencies in the amount of $1,469,358.17. Joining me this morning to present this next resolution is Marley Swicker, Interim Chief of the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, and Franklin County's Small and Emerging Business Coordinator. Commissioners, this resolution requests your approval of 88 purchase orders for which the county auditor has pre-certified available funding. Good morning. This week, 15 out of 23 eligible purchase orders are being presented for award to small and emerging businesses. These 15 purchase orders total $6, I mean $692,212, which equates to 65% of the eligible PO volume and 90% of the eligible PO dollar amount. The 15 purchase orders include seven women business enterprises, five minority business enterprises, and three small and emerging, which are being presented for award to qualified businesses in the following Franklin County or from the following Franklin County agencies, purchasing the print shop, public facilities management, economic development and planning, the engineer's office, emergency management, the data center, court of common <laughs> pleas, the probate court, clerk of courts and the sheriff's offices. Pending any questions, go right ahead, Megan. No, you're fine. Any questions, any questions, we request your approval of this resolution. We quite haven't worked out that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it worked out all right. Uh, if there are no further questions or any questions, uh, I will move approval of resolution 259-21. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Resolution number 259-21 has been adopted. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Care. Next, uh, Board of Commissioners. 
Resolution number 26021, resolution authorizing the issuance of taxable limited tax bonds in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $85 million for the purpose of providing funds to advance refund certain outstanding general obligation bonds of the county and author authorizing related documents and agreements. Good morning, commissioners. Zach Telerik with the Office of Management and Budget. Uh, this resolution would allow for the advanced refunding of two series of uh, previously issued bonds. There's approximately 30 million in bonds that were issued in 2013 and 42 million in bonds issued in 2014 uh, that would be uh, allowed to be called with the authorization in this resolution. Uh, the Office of Management and Budget and County Administration would work with our Municipal Advisor, Umbaugh and Associates, as well as Bond Council at Frost Brown Todd to ensure that we achieve sufficient savings before moving forward with this transaction. Uh, we also have Mark Miller from Umbaugh, as well as Emmett Kelly from Frost Brown Todd, um, if you have any questions on this uh, pending transaction. I had my questions addressed at briefing. All right. Well, if there are no further comments or questions, I will move approval to 6021. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Resolution number 26021 has been adopted. Thank you, Commissioners. Commissioner Boyce, did you want to uh, open up the floor before we read the last resolution, sir? Sure. Uh, let me open up the floor to, is, is there any media that are present that have questions for us on any of the um, legislation presented today? Okay, seeing that there's an end, we'll keep moving. Resolution number 261 Oh, wait a minute. Tom is trying to chime in there. Tom, you got to come on. You're, you're muted. Sorry. Hey, Tom, how you doing? <laughs> you know, like we haven't been doing this for a whole year. I, I right? know. I'm, I really. <laughs> <laughs> I have some questions about the zoo. Do you want to just keep this right now to questions about the previous resolutions? Or do you can you will you talk about other stuff right now? Or do you want me to wait? I mean, you could ask your question, but I'll tell you, we've been advised uh, on legal counsel that um, to not um, talk about uh the um, pending investigation results. And, and quite frankly, we haven't received them and, and um, are hopeful to receive them. And so I'm not sure we could offer much by way of your questions anyways. So what are you expecting those findings to have? I mean, I, I think I just heard your answer possibly, but what do you expect to, to find in those uh, investigation results that are gonna be, uh, we hope released today? You know, again, I, I've been advised by our legal counsel that I'm uh, an ex official board member. And so I've been advised to not discuss any particulars of the case. Um, I, I will say, you know, um, I, I'd like the process to come to conclusion, whatever the investigation or results are, I'd like to allow that process to come to conclusion. Uh, and, and, and from there, you know, um, we'll react accordingly. When, when it comes to the um, when it comes to the um, uh, real estate that was uh, allegedly mishandled, those properties are yours, not yours, but the county's, of course. I mean, is there any better way for the county to keep track of what's going on with properties that it's own that it owns? Commissioner Boyce, if I may interject. Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> I, I just want to make clear that right now, and as the public would want, we want we're in the information gathering point, and it would be premature and irresponsible really to make those comments um, without having all our facts in place um, and all the investigation completed so that we can move forward um, with the complete transparency of that investigation. So if you give us or allow us a little time to conduct that and ask our questions, we'll be able to report better to the public so they have their answers. And then Commissioner Boyce, one last one then, if you don't mind. Um, can you just give me your general reaction to, to what's been 
uh, revealed so far in this investigation? I mean, what's your general reaction if these allegations are are uh, come to, to be true? I mean, uh, they were obviously troubling enough that these two um, officials resigned over them. I'm eager to see the final results of the investigation. That's what I can tell you. Thanks. Yep. Thanks, Tom. Commissioner, shall we? Yes, please proceed. Thank you. Resolution number 261-21. Resolution of the Franklin County Board of Commissioners to convene into executive session for the purpose of considering personnel matters and to confer with an attorney for the public body concerning disputes involving the public body. Is there a motion? Uh, I'm sorry, let me... Um... Uh, one second while I read this officially. Um, I move to convene an executive session to consider the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of a public employee and to confer with an attorney for the public body concerning disputes involving the public body that are the subject of pending or imminent court action. Second. Moved and seconded. Voting. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Resolution number 26121 has been adopted. We are now in executive session at 9.49 a.m. And for those of you going into executive session, just stay put and I will get you moved over as soon as possible. For those of you that are not, you're more than welcome to stay on the line or exit as you see fit. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>